right, you guys, we're going to do one more recap. We're going to be going over another game today from Game 6 of the Tottenham Masters. And we'll be looking at the game between Jordan Van Forest and Chakra Mamadiara. All right, so the game starts with E4 here. E5 is played by Chakra. We have Knight F3. And now we get Knight to C6. Bishop to B5. A6. Chakra, by the way, is one of the players who generally does not really play the Berlin setup. So he's almost he almost always plays A6. I think in the Magnus Tour, he did start to play a little bit of the Berlin, but very predominantly plays A6. Bishop A4. Knight to S6 is played. Castles. And now Knight takes E4. Of course, there are many different lines here in the Spanish, but playing the open Spanish is one of the favorites of Chakra. Okay, so D4. D5 is played here. Bishop to B3. D5. Now D takes E5. Bishop E6. And now here Jordan plays A4. Now I'm going to do just, just um, uh, a short a short little trip back in time. So many, many years ago in 1995, I went to the World Championship. It was being held in New York City at the World Trade Center, which unfortunately no longer exists. It was a match played between Vichy Anand and Gary Kasparov. And I remember I was very young at the time. And when I went there... Uh, the first time that I ever saw this variation with the open Spanish was that game. And right? it was a very memorable game. Those of you who are unfamiliar with it, it went, I believe it was, um, it was knight d2, knight c5, c3, d4, knight to g5. And then, and then I believe it was d takes c3, if I rem remember correctly, knight takes e6, f takes e6, bc3, queen d3, and on and on the game goes. At any rate, um, this was the first time that I ever saw the open Spanish and it's a game that really stuck with me for a long time and it's a very fascinating game those of you guys who haven't seen it, of course there are plenty of recaps on YouTube of this game go to a Korchnoi this was not um a Korchnoi idea this I believe was an idea of Mikel Tal originally with Knight G5 and I think Geller was another player who had played it at any rate uh it's a line that's been around for a very very long time so A4 is played here a little bit surprising by Jordan like I said there are many different setups you can play C3 Knight D2 Queen E2 is another setup um I'm trying to think if there are any other moves that really are main line. I don't think so. But all those lines have a lot of different variations within them. Oh, it was Geller who discovered it? I thought Tal maybe had discovered it, but it was it, it was Geller? Okay. Fair enough. All right. So A4 is played here. So B4 is played. And now Bishop to E3. And now Bishop to E7 played by Chakra. Again, pretty standard. Although normally, as I said before, you don't have this A4, B4. So one common line here is to play Bishop E3. But after Bishop E3... Black can play the move Bishop to C5 here. So perhaps Jorn's idea was that after A4, B4, Bishop E3, if Black plays Bishop C5 here, maybe there's some difference within this, like after Queen E2 castles. And I guess maybe with the pawns in A4 and B4, there's some very minute difference. I'm not really sure what the difference is. But at any rate, uh, Jorn clearly had some idea. So Bishop E7 was played here. A5 played by Jorn. And now Chakra castles. And here Jorn plays Queen D3. As I said before, normally when you play the setups with Bishop E3, you almost always play Queen to E2. So going Queen D3 is a little bit unusual. At any rate, he plays Queen D3, but this does give Chakra the very interesting and correct idea here to play Knight C5. Now after Bishop takes C5, Bishop takes C5, what you'll notice is black, that Black has the Bishop pair. You have the Bishops on E6 and C5. And so because Black has the Bishop pair, you'll also notice there's this very nasty pin that you're going to have to deal with for the rest of the game. From the bishop on c5 towards the king on g1 so it is very very committal by jordan and what happens now is that he really has to do something in the center of the board immediately or else he could end up in a lot of trouble so jordan plays c3 here logical move again with this pawn on b4 is very annoying like in a perfect world you want this knight on c3 because it puts pressure on the pawn on d5 but you can't do that because of course if you play knight c3 black just takes the knight the c3 is a logical way of trying to get the knight to c3 of course chakra says no sir i have no interest in, in helping you finish your development so he plays knight to e7 here and already as you guys can probably see from the valuation it's starting to trend in the wrong direction once again black has the bishop pair additionally black center is very solid so long term if black can go like bishop a7 for example and just make a couple moves to highlight it if black can go bishop a7 and c5 c4 black will be clearly better here the knight bd2 is played by Jordan, and now pawn takes pawn is played by chakra now again after the game it's easy to see that the computer is not a big fan of it i think the computer would have preferred to keep the pawn here and play a move like knight to g6 or bishop f5 but again it's a very logical move to me to take now Jordan takes on c3 and the funny thing here is that this is actually the last moment where i feel like Jordan really sort of had to control the game was not really letting it spiral out of control and in this position, there's a very tricky move, bishop to c2 first, inverting the move order. 
And after bishop to c2, you threaten to checkmate on h7. So black has to play a move like knight g6. And now you can, I think, take with either the queen or the pawn. And white's probably okay here. Um, and you've saved yourself a little bit of time. So instead, he takes with a pawn. And now after bishop a7, there is a problem which is that now white can no longer play bishop c2 because now I go bishop f5 and you're you're very clumsy here you can't move the queen over the queen can only go back and you lose your bishop whereas if we go back here and this is why computers are so annoying annoying is that after bishop c2 bishop f5 you can take you still have the pawn here so you don't run into this very nuanced trick whereas after you take you no longer can put the bishop on c2 and get this great battery towards the pawn on h7 like you really want in this position so after bishop a7, knight d4 is played by Jordan. And now bishop to d7 is played. Now here knight f3 is played played again. Very strange move to me optically. Uh, once again, bishop c2 makes a lot more sense. And then after black plays a move like, let's just say g6, for example, it feels like you can probably move the queen. I'm going to say to g3 maybe, follow it up with like knight f3, maybe f4, f5. And I think white's doing okay. But Jordan again chooses not to play bishop c2, and he leaves the bishop on b3. And this kind of makes me wonder exactly what his prep was or where he sort of lost the thread because it just feels like he's already drifting now he plays knight 2 to f3 and now shakura plays c5 and you can tell that there's a lot of danger here once again you do have the move bishop c2 but let's presume you don't have that move if you move the knight black goes c4 forking the queen and the bishop and now you will lose material and against the player of shock caliber you will definitely lose the game is knight 4 f3 a better move knight 4 f3 is a move but the problem with putting the knight here is again I can play c5 and now you also have to contend with the idea of bishop d5 putting pressure on the queen on d3 and the rook on f1 i also still have bishop f5 and black is doing very very well here also you'll notice when you look at the position black kind of has a little bit more of the center with the pawns on c5 and d5 versus e5 and he has the bishop pair so those two those two things mean that black is clearly better in this position so he plays knight 2 f3 c5 is played here by chakra and now we have e6 played by jordan Again, I am very com confused as to why Jordan did not play bishop c2. He refuses it for a third time in a row. Uh, and I feel like the last four moves, bishop c2 was the best move every time. So I don't know um, I don't know exactly what uh, what Jordan was thinking. At any rate, he plays e6 here. And now Chakra plays bishop e8. He does not take the pawn on e6 because after pawn takes pawn, white can go knight g5. And you're hitting h7 with the queen in the knight. You have to stop the, the mate threat. Let's just say g6. And now white goes knight d takes e6 and you're dealing with a fork of the queen and the rook and white should be much better here if not outright winning so back to the game after e6 chakra correctly plays bishop e8 ignoring everything now jordan goes knight to g5 if he were to take on f7 you'll notice that once again after bishop f7 you're in a lot of trouble here now bishop c2 is no longer an idea because even though you threaten the checkmate i can play this little in between move bishop g6 hitting the queen and now when you move your queen you lose the knight and additionally, if you try knight g5, trying to go for the same idea with mate on h7, I go bishop g6, same thing, attack the queen, and you move the queen, and I just eat the knight on d4. So therefore, J Jordan plays knight to g5 here, trying to go for checkmate. Now, Chakra plays f5, which completely shuts down the diagonal and any threats of checkmate on h7. And this is where Jordan finally loses the thread completely, and he blunders here. The last chance for white to sort of stay in the game here was to play queen to h3. And after h6 stopping the checkmate on h7 you could throw a knight f7 after bishop takes f7 e takes f7 rook takes f7 you can still probably play the move knight to e6 queen d6 and rook e1 and you're definitely worse here but you're not completely lost like in the game jordan however does not does not want any part of that instead he plays knight f7 and it would be interesting probably we'll find we'll find out down the road what exactly jordan saw or did not see but I suspect he actually overlooked the very simple line that Chakra plays here. So in this position, Chakra plays rook takes f7 here. And now you take the rook. But after bishop f7, think, well, he gave up a rook for a knight. I should be better. The only problem is, once again, these central pawns are a big issue. And you're going to lose either the knight or the bishop here. If you don't move the knight, I will take it, of course. And after knight takes f5, which happens in the game, now black can throw in c4, forking the queen and the bishop on d3 and b3. So after c4, bishop takes c4 is played by Jordan. And now Chakra plays knight f5. Of course, you do not take the bishop on c4. Because after pawn takes bishop, queen takes queen, rook takes queen, white can take the knight. And after king f8, knight c6, just say rook d7. You can trade on a7 and go rook b1. Two rooks versus a rook and a bishop, and white should be winning here. 
So after bishop takes c4, knight takes f5 is played here by Shakriar. Now Jordan takes the pawn on a6, and Shakriar plays knight d6 here. The idea being that the bishop on a6, it looks kind of nice. Maybe you can go to b7 and play a6, but it's actually dominated by, by the knight on d6 here. No squares to go to. Additionally, now you look at this great op, this bishop on a7. It, it not only does it put pressure on the diagonal, it also stops white from pushing the pawn. So say I just make some random moves and you get the pawn here. This pawn ain't going nowhere, buddy, because the bishop on a7 is just in the way of the pawn and you can't push it further up the board. So black should be winning here already in this position. The queen to f3 is played by Jordan with bishop c5. Logical move moves the bishop out of the way. And now you're attacking both the bishop on a6 and the pawn on a5. So bishop to d3 is played. Chakra trades on a5. And now h4 is played. Again, technically speaking, this should already be winning for black. But due to the fact that all the pawns are on the same side of the board here, there are definitely some drawing chances. And ironically, Chakra in his previous game, he had a, he had um, two rooks versus a rook, a bishop, and a knight against Duda. And in this game, he ends up the other side where he has a bishop and a knight against the rook and again the pawns are all on the same side so he ends up on the exact flip-flop of the previous game so in this position after h4 h5 is played jordan plays g3 again trying to create some lift for the king additionally trying to create a pawn chain as well knight to e8 is played now it's worth noting queen takes c3 is a very poor move you might think yay i got this pawn on the queen side i'm just gonna win the game only problem is i can now go bishop h7 creating the discovered attack i check your king and now when you take the bishop take the queen on c3 and you just resign so after g3 chakra chooses to reroute his knight here again one thing you'll notice at the top level is piece placement is very very important on top of just doing the pure calculation so knight e8 is played here because when you look at the position the knight on d6 it looks well placed but it's actually not doing a whole lot it's only preventing say c4 here maybe white putting something on e4 in this position so therefore you think well where can the knight be better placed and the knight is actually perfectly placed on the e8 square when you play knight to e8 with the idea of going knight f6 now you cover e4 additionally you can put the knight on g4 and put a lot of pressure towards the pawn on f2 so after knight e8 is played c4 is played by jordan here now d takes c4 is played very surprising move by the way because after c4 probably knight f6 is safer and after takes bishop takes you get you get the you get the wooden shield in the center of the board but not only that but your ops are also just they're just pointing right down towards where white's king is and it should be pretty good but after d takes c4 which is a little bit careless by shock right jordan plays bishop to h7 and in reality at this point the game is actually close to a draw now if you take on h7 here white can play queen takes f7 and i'm hitting both h5 and c4 so you go knight f6 i capture on c4 and again with the rook and three versus the bishop knight and two those of you who can do math you'll know that eight eight is equal to eight obviously three six seven eight versus one two three and five so eight is equal to eight so the game would be a draw here so after queen takes f7 if you go knight d6 here then white can just take h5 follow it up with queen d5 and once again white will be completely fine so after bishop takes bishop to h7 here chakra goes king to f8 now and now bishop g6 is played by jordan and we have knight to f6 bishop takes f7 king takes f7 and once again this is the last critical moment where jordan for whatever reason he can't regroup enough and find the best moves if jordan had played the move queen to b7 here he would have been very close to drawing the game because as always we have the good old-fashioned classic right triangle those of you guys who haven't studied your 90 degree angles definitely make sure to study them if you do you'll be a grand master and the reason is that I expect Jordan saw King g6 and thought, well, I'm losing. But again, you have Queen b1 check hitting the king. Go to h6. I play Queen c1. Again, a double attack, winning the pawn. And if you go back to, let's just say, g8, for example, in this position, I can now play the move Queen to c8 check, hitting your king. If you block, I take on c4. So you go King h7. Now I go Queen f5, and I yo-yo between f5 and c8. If you go here, we check, and again, you have to go back, and then we get back to our starting position. You can't go to g8 you can't go you can't go to g6 either if you try to block with the bishop on e7 here for example white can play rook c1 attacking the pawn you go c3 i can just go queen to b3 check and i'm going to win the pawn and if you block with the knight here you can follow this up with queen c4 and rook d1 again i won't get into the details of this but this is completely fine for white so in this position this would have been a draw so jordan had this one last opportunity here after king takes f7 to play queen b7 and make a draw instead in this position 
he chooses to play the move rook to c1, attacking the pawn immediately. And after rook to c1, now the game has started to slip away because black can play this move queen to c7. And like in this other previous variation, one thing you have to be careful of is obvious moves because when they look too obvious, generally it's like when you when you're out fishing, you're you're out on the lake, you know, you put that bait on, you you, you cast. You cast the line and you're just sitting there and the fish thinks hmm this looks like some yummy this looks like some yummy food i'm just going to eat it it's the same thing here where you see i have a free pawn and i'm just going to capture it unfortunately when you take i go bishop f2 with a clean discovered attack and after king f2 queen c4 black is completely winning so here king g2 is played by jordan and now we have bishop d4 creating the classic wooden shield and at this point the game is pretty much lost so queen a8 is played pawn to c3 and now this pass pawn will be simply too much for Jordan to deal with. Queen a2, king to g6, we get check. King h6, queen d3, queen b7, check is played. Very nice move, by the way, because f2, because now if f2 falls, which is the base of the pawn chain, everything else will collapse as well. So f3 is played, queen to b2, check, rook c2, queen to b1. And now, of course, you cannot move your rook anywhere because you would lose the queen. Additionally, I'm threatening to go queen g1 as well. So this is very, very good for black in this position. So after queen b1 is played queen to f5 is played here by jordan and the idea is pretty simple either you want to go queen f4 or queen g5 here and try to maybe make a repetition try to make a draw if you can but after queen f5 shocker goes bishop e3 again preventing both the checks either on f4 or g5 and additionally keeping the pin alive to the queen so now you can't check you can't like go anywhere because your queen has no good squares it's tied to the rook two, two check squares are covered and you have nothing to do so king h3 is played here by jordan uh, someone in chat just asked why not queen g1 because after king h3 queen h1 white can still block with the rook and hope for a miracle not to say that this isn't winning but it's just it isn't checkmate on the spot the so bishop e3 is played here and now jordan plays king h3 and after the move queen to d1 here jordan resigns in view of the fact that their checkmate threats on h1 there's also the problem of bishop d2 and the last problem is you really just have no moves so if you can't move the queen if you move the queen anywhere i take the pawn so the queen has no squares obviously um, and it's tied all these squares on the diagonal are covered so you can't move your queen so you can't really i guess you could theoretically push g4 that that is one idea but now after queen to h1 rook to h2 queen to f1 rook g2 black can just trade everything off trade the pawns trade the queens and go bishop d2 followed by c2 c1 queen and it's just ggs on the spot so you can't really push the g pawn here uh, you can't really move the queen as we've established you could move the king uh, and if you push f4 here one last point that i would say the idea of course queen g5 black has many ways when probably the easiest is just to go queen g4 trade the queens king g2 and now bishop d2 and after king f2 you go knight d5 king to e2 knight to b4 and the rook is simply trapped here on c2 it has no squares you can't push any of the pawns and the last thing that you can do really here is maybe you can move your rook to like h2 but again here after the move bishop to d2 idea of c2 c1 or even queen f1 it's just too much to deal with and a player of shock bear's caliber is simply not going to be blundering in this sort of position so jordan resigns and continues his roller coaster ride in the tournament he now has two wins and two losses shock bear, meanwhile is thanking the golden gods for giving him that gift against duda and now he wins the second game in a row and he is tied for the lead so it's gonna be really fun to see what happens tomorrow in round seven of the tata steel masters